In a previous video, I stated that the iPad Pro wasn't pro enough for software developers. And while I maintain that's true to an extent, there are some tools on here that will help you do some light programming and maybe even some IT administration tasks right from this device. So let's take a look, see how we can do that. So there's three main strategies in using the iPad Pro as your software development platform, and I'll just go over them quickly. The first is editing and executing your code directly on the device. This is the holy grail of using this as the programming environment because you don't need an internet connection and everything just runs here and you can see it on this device. The second is having another machine that you remote access from this device and having the development environment externalized. And the third is sort of like the second, but using something like the web browser to program through the internet and then have the code again executed on the cloud platform. And if you are really bent on using the iPad Pro as your development machine, I highly recommend getting a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard. So with me, I have the Keychron K6 Bluetooth Mechanical Gatoron Brown Switch Keyboard along with a Logitech M720 Triathlon Bluetooth mouse. And I know the iPad Pro has the magic keyboard that you can use to type and program with, but I highly recommend an actual keyboard, even though it's a little bit bigger than the magic keyboard. It's just gonna make your life easier. It's got all the, everything you need on there. I'm gonna go through my experience with programming on the iPad Pro with the three different methods talk about the first one. While it is possible to program on the iPad Pro, I found the experience pretty painful. A couple of things. Programming directly on the device, while it's possible, you're very limited on what you can do. A lot of the languages available are mostly interpreted languages. So you have things like PHP, Python, things of that nature. Uh, I found the tools on the iPad Pro for programming directly on the device not as good as what you would typically find on a desktop. I'm comparing it to things like any of the JetBrains, IDE, VS Code. Uh, they're just okay, but you're missing the features that you would take for granted on the desktop. The second method was using an external machine to be the workhorse while the iPad Pro is basically a terminal into that machine. What I use was a program called Shelly, which allows me to SSH into a remote machine. I have a Raspberry Pi setup, and I also have an old Intel Atom PC laptop that I have set up, and I'm able to SSH from any number of devices into them from the outside world. I don't have password authentication set up. I have it with a public private key set up so that I'm not typing in passwords and it's one less mechanism that hackers can use to get into the system. There are a ton of things you can do from the Linux command line and you can use something like Emacs or VI code directly on there and there's tons of tools to allow you to compile, run, web servers run servers in general from your Raspberry Pi. One of the quirks that I found with using the terminal from the iPad OS was that it ends up killing the application when it goes into the background. So what that means is if you are running your terminal and you alt tab into Safari or something, you have 30 seconds before the OS kills the application and it kills your connection. There are some workarounds. One of them is turning on GPS for the application. So it allows the application to continuously run in the background, but who's to say that in the future, iPad OS will also aggressively kill any connections related to that process. So that's up in the air. There are ways around it. One is if you are executing SSH into a Linux session, run something like screen 
or tmux to allow you to keep that terminal session open so even if it disconnects you can reconnect to that existing session and allow you to continue where you left off so while it's possible i found it was kind of frustrating to deal with all the little nuances of the iPad OS killing my connection as I switched into another application for a couple of seconds. Workarounds, but still annoying. I even used something like an X11 server, so an X server that allowed me to put windowed applications on my iPad. But what I found is when I ran something like a, let's say Chrome on the iPad, through X terminal, it was incredibly slow because it had to go over the wireless connection, even though I'm fairly close to the router, it wasn't a good experience. And I can imagine if I'm actually in the field and connected through something like an LTE network. Yeah, I wouldn't even imagine trying to use that over LTE. It's just not a, not a fun thing to do. And then finally, the third method I tried was using Safari to connect to something like VS Code. And Microsoft has something called Visual Code Online, but it didn't work so well. It didn't work at all, actually. I had to go and create a subscription, put in my credit card, all this other stuff before I was actually able to open up the studio, Visual Studio on the browser on my desktop, but on the iPad, it kept on giving me an error saying there was some error, not really specific, please log in and try again. And it just didn't work at all. So I think number three is your best option. But right now, what I looked at was VS Code online didn't work on Safari. So no go. So um, at the beginning of this video, and I've been working on this for a week. I had the premise that you could possibly get your workflow around the iPad Pro as a software developer, but it's so frustrating to use that I would just get like a MacBook Air or just like a, some cheaper Windows machine and program from there. This is completely, um, completely frustrating to work from this device. This is, this was supposed to be, oh, you can program on the iPad Pro on the go. Um, but in the end it came into like, yeah, I don't even want to attempt that in real life for any longer than a day that I had trying this. Props to you people out there who have been able to do it. But for me, it, I have a fully capable machine there. So why would I put myself through this? In fact, I have, in fact, if I, if I needed a tablet type device and I really wanted to do some actual programming, this is the device that I would definitely go for. It's roughly the same price as the iPad Pro, but you can do everything on here that a programmer would want to do. It's got full Windows operating system on here. It runs WSL2 Windows subsystem for Linux, so everything you could want is in here. If you're a programmer, you'll definitely want something like this as your portable development machine rather than the iPad Pro. You're putting yourself in a lot of frustration and workarounds and I just found it, it was just way too much to deal with. So it's just a bunch of complaints from me. However, if you're just starting out learning programming, it's a great way to use the iPad Pro, what you already have, to do some of the experimenting and programming on it. So I wouldn't discourage you from doing that if you are, let's say, a computer science student, or you're just, you just really want to maybe get into web development and get the feel for some of the programming. In conclusion, it's doable but not ideal. And if you're a hobbyist or possibly even a computer science student, you can 
get around it by using the iPad Pro as a development machine, but you're really, you're really, what's the word? Yeah, you're, you're really causing yourself more troubles than it's possibly worth versus another machine that has everything you need in there. So can you use the iPad Pro as a development machine? <laughs> Maybe, if you're crazy enough. So programming on the iPad Pro, uh, I went through all of the methods that I discussed previously and I didn't find it was a good experience at all. Oh, stop scratching.